Talking about panning out. Talking about panning out. Do you guys want an update on Jay Slater? I know you do. I know you guys want an update on Jay Slater. So I've reported or spoken about it. Not reported. I'm not a bloody journalist. I've spoken about this story that's been a bit viral over here in the UK about a missing British teenager called Jay Slater, who unfortunately um, has gone missing in Tenerife. They went out there with their friends for a holiday weekend to party, to rave and have a good time. But unfortunately, on the way home, on the way home from another place they were at after the festival, they ended up disappearing somewhere in the mountains of Tenerife. It's a story that's gripped um the uk people are trying to figure out what happened to him um, and just trying to put the pieces together well let's figure out let's figure out what the latest theory is regarding jay slater's disappearance the latest theory regarding jay slater's disappearance is absolutely stunning this is courtesy of a person on twitter called helen catherine helen catherine all one word she posts the following tweet remember lucy associate who posted a detailed account of how they were doing how they were drug mules they said that their boss would meet them around 5 a.m to pick up the money ayub kwasim a convicted dealer picked him up and took him to the airbnb it's looking very sus so allegedly the another spin another narrative on this jay slater thing is that this jay slater kid was an alleged drug mule and they've got some racket they run out there in Tenerife where all these young kids basically go out there for the season to sell drugs um, for a particular mob, particular gang, particular cartel. And then they have um, meet, they have kind of a, what do they think? They have correspondence within that gang that meet them every night, sometimes on a weekend to pick up the money or pick up whatever drugs are left over. Bloody blah, 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 simple rules, right? And this is one of the guys that they're talking about because I think in the original account, when Jay Slater leaves the festival or the rave that he's at at 4am in the morning, he's looking for somewhere else to go. And in between that, his drug person comes and picks him up to take him to the house to kind of account for what he sold, what he hasn't sold. And I guess within that period is when he disappears. And this is obviously the Somali kid that they're talking about that might be involved. But the actual story behind it is pretty wild. So I'm going to read it to you. This is courtesy of someone on Twitter, right? Pretty wild account of what allegedly happened. I'm not too sure if I believe this, to be fair, because it does sound quite fanciful, but allegedly this is extra detail about the whole Jay Slater thing. And it's taken from Facebook as well. So I'm I'm, tr I'm prone to believing it because Facebook is home of the mummies, right? All the mums live on Facebook. Um, they have way too much time on their hands. They love a good conspiracy theory. They love a good gossip. And you'd imagine people within the local community, wherever that Jay Slater are from, are also contributing to this narrative. So I'm prone to believe this because of the mums exist on Facebook. So courtesy of Jay Slater discussions on Facebook. This is another theory. This is not fake. Lucy May, who's Jay Slater's friend, who also went out on holiday with them, is not innocent at all. I'm a close associate of Lucy and others in Tenerife and Ibiza area. Rumours are true. Lucy is a drug mule. We work together. About 20 of us all split into groups. Half to Ibiza, half to Tenerife. This is our job. We get brought out every event or on any month in general to deal. Depending on who you are or how long you've been doing it or what you've done. You'll get paid differently. Lucy is more of a top dog in it. Lucy gets about 25 grand a month to deal and sell drugs. About 10 of us get 14 grand a month and the new recruits get paid about five grand a month. That's the first alarm bell, red flag, that, that, that makes me believe this story isn't true. The numbers sound too good. From what I'm aware of, from my dealings with people that live in that world, they don't tend to give you that much money. They tend to kind of keep you on the tight leash. If they give you so much money like that, you're probably not gonna come back after month one. They wanna keep you around. They wanna make sure that you're hungry and still doing it. So they might give you, I don't know, two grand, a grand. They might put you up in the house and then they might give you a house to stay in and then give you a grand. The 25 grand thing sounds a little bit too much to me, it, personally. Five to 25 grand sounds a bit too much, but I could be wrong. It continues. Lucy met Jay at a festival and started discussing with him over Snapchat about how much we make doing all this, how it's a luxury and we basically live the life. Jay came along to Tenerife to meet me and Lucy there. So allegedly the reason why he went to Tenerife wasn't only for the festival, it was to meet these connects who wanted to bring him in and, you know, get him acquainted with doing the drug deals for these drug mob guys and stuff and being a quote unquote drug mule. I don't really call it a drug mule, I just call it a shutter because a drug mule, you're transporting drugs from one location to the other. He's more selling it to be fair, which isn't really a mule thing. So let's continue here. 
Jay came along to Tenerife to meet me and Lucy there. Lucy explained the dangers to Jay. If we fuck up, we are basically dead. Our bosses take disrespect to heart and do not tread lightly from past experiences and what we've witnessed. We got dropped backpacks of stuff, um, estimated about 17 grand to sell and, and dish at the festival or in the streets in general. There's about, which is a quite a good tactic, by the way. I'd never thought about that. Imagine if you're a dealer, it does make quite a lot of sense why they would do that. Imagine if you're a drug dealer in, a, in Tenerife and you're trying to sell to kids. It's probably easier to get other kids to sell to them. And allegedly Tenerife is a bit of a corrupt place anyway. The police turn a blind eye to a lot of shit. And you'd imagine the drugs trade, unfortunately, and tourism is a huge part of their overall GDP and shit, right? That's what bloody keeps the lights on over there on that island. So if you want to increase your ability to sell, just get the kids to sell to each other. But you run the risk of employing kids, you employ teenagers, you're going to get teenager shit. And stuff like this is going, is, can happen from time to time. So it is a quite a clever plan, quite a clever approach to selling drugs, but it's also very risky for both parties. Continuing, because, you know, the teenagers could also snitch on you and rat you out, and you could also lose all your stuff, and you could also get bagged up. So it's kind of risky. But we continue. There was five bags, and we got given um, designated bag holders who would have the bag 24-7, then take out however much anyone needed. Lucy had a bag along with me and also Jay. We separate into groups and go our ways to sell. Lucy then gets a phone call from Jay at 3am on Monday morning. <laughs> God almighty. This is sounding a little bit more believable. Lucy gets a phone call from Jay Slater at 3am on Monday morning. Him crying, saying he has lost the bag. That sounds like such a British thing to do. I bet you any money, there must be some dealers out there. I bet you. I bet you there's dealers in the Balearic Islands who purposely refuse to hire English people, British people like myself, as drug dealers because of our tendency to do all the drugs, get fucked up and lose all the drugs. I bet you that's a thing. I bet you they prefer to hire Spanish kids, French kids, Italian kids, Germans, anyone else apart from Brits. I bet you there's a thing because this is something that probably happens so often. Genuinely, I lost the bag. It's like, how do you lose the bag? I'm like, what the fuck, man? I gave you 17 grand worth of stuff. How do you lose the bag? Jesus Christ. Um, so um, Lucy then gets a phone call from Jay at 3 a.m. in the morning of him crying, saying he lost the bag. Lucy didn't think anything of it until he told her that he's taken half of them for himself already. Imagine that. He gets given a bag full of drugs. He does half of it himself, which is doesn't really matter because as long as you can cover the money, I guess they won't give a fuck. But then he loses the other half. <sighs> um, and the bag was stolen. Of course, we all panic as our lives are at stake here. This is someone's business and we've lost them £6,000. We go and meet Jay and Lucy. We go and meet Jay and Lucy tells him how she doesn't know what he, she's going to do or what she's even going to say. At around 5 a.m., our bosses ring as this is the time that they come to our current location to collect the remaining packages and the money. So they come every time, every weekend in the morning at 5 a.m. to collect what you've done and obviously make sure everything's kosher, you didn't fucking nick anything, and then you rinse and repeat. You honestly don't have that much time. How do you lose a bag? You only have to hold it for like six hours. It's not, it's not like it's not like they give you the bag on the Friday and they collect it on a Sunday. That makes sense why you you know it could go missing or some shit. But you've only got to hold it from the start of your night out, maybe at 9 p.m. until 5. It isn't that long. Like, Cardi, oh, these guys, man. Jesus Christ. Um, Lucy didn't tell him on the phone that Jay had taken half already and lost the bag on top of that. Around 30 minutes later, they come to collect and realize that there's only four bags. We all get questioned. And that's when Lucy um, confirms to him that Jay has done. So this is one of the theories, right? This is one of the theories. They're, they're drug dealers out there in Tenerife. The Jay Slater kid, unfortunately, um, does one of the biggest mistakes ever and ends up losing and consuming half of the bag, half of the, he consumes half of it, lodges half of it, and obviously gets in trouble with the drug dealers, which might explain why he's gone missing. So it, this might be one of those instances of like, fuck around and find out. Cool. Um, but there's so many things here that could have been averted firstly if i was jay slater and i lost the stuff don't call your friend because you don't know what your friend's position is with the gang you don't know if he's like if she's involved involved you know if she has to report that stuff back like it's too risky if i lost it genuinely lost it i would have just went back home 
just flew back home called your mum mum send me some money please book me a flight please let's i have to go right now and then from that location i would have got into a cab straight to the airport and just left because these are drug dealers bro you're you're and you're also in a, in, a, in an island where allegedly the police turn a blind eye to certain things you've got no one is gonna have your back if you report to the police they might call them and alert them it's all it's all a madness i would have just called my mum, got some money got on a flight and then ran back home that's the first thing i would have done not just go walking around and shit but i'm still curious to find out what actually happened when he left the club because allegedly he was at the club he leaves the club with two other people to go to another house i would i wonder why what happened after he left that house because it feels like he went to that house maybe to pick up some more stuff to hang out with those guys maybe try and fuck someone who knows but what happened when he left more than likely anyway if it was me i would believe the thing where I forgot what the there's a word for it where sometimes the easiest explanation is the only explanation i forgot the term for it exactly but i think exactly what happened was this i think most likely the kid was high and drunk he's 19 it might be his first festival his first time going abroad on that in that kind of level doing a lot of stuff under the heat and shit you probably got too fucked up and when he was going to the bus stop, I think there's a woman, a Spanish lady, said that she bumped into him and he asked her what, when the bus was going to get there, 8 a.m. She said 10. He didn't want to wait, so he kept on walking. I think more than likely, he was coming down, he was still drunk, and he just went wandering and unfortunately got lost. And he, you know, he's dehydrated and shit, probably hungry. He went and sat somewhere and then he went to sleep and unfortunately hasn't woke up woke up again. That's what I think personally happened. I don't think there's anything too malicious about it. I don't think it's anything too malicious, too crazy. I just think this is one of those unfortunate instances where he just did too much and got lost, you know, unfortunately. The other story I've also heard is that there's a story regarding an AP. Allegedly, this kid stole someone's watch. Like, it gets fucking wild. Allegedly, this kid stole someone's watch. Um, and I'm going to play you a clip from this guy called Nick Rose who speaks about it on Twitter and allegedly this is another part of the story that makes everything a little bit more crazy so allegedly this kid stole someone's watch the person's watch that he stole is allegedly a serious person um, and this is what have resulted in this kid going missing and this is why most likely he won't be found alive allegedly but I'm not too sure if I believe this account this sounds a little bit too Hollywood but who knows video early on today and I've had loads of people reach out to me actually and I've been sent something that I'm going to show you at the end of this video now I've got to be careful because I don't want to incriminate certain people um, the video I'm going to show you it makes a lot of sense after today's breaking news uh, about a watch but the name I've heard so I wouldn't be the first person to say it I'm sure you can all work it out it's a name that's been banded around from one of the two men that apparently Jay went up to the um, Airbnb or at least was with these people. Um, I, I think I've definitely seen something to do with his mum mentioning the name of this person. But anyway, I said earlier on in a video that I heard from very early on that there was something to do with a watch, somebody nicked a watch. And then this guy's come out today and he's talking about there being a snapchat from jay to his mates this is what i saw really early on this is a picture from a facebook post i think it was on the 21st of june so this is what i saw very early on uh, it's a facebook post you can see it's 21st of june and it was uh, saying thinking last night about this rolex story who in the right mind would take off a 30 grand rolex and put it on the side well evidently today it's come out that it wasn't a rolex it was something called an AP. And keep watching because I've got a video that might incriminate or certainly coincidence, I don't know. Okay, so this, this is an AP. It's a, a Swiss watch. It's called Audemars Piquet, Audemars Piquet. These are about 30 to 50,000 pounds. Make sure you just look at this, look at the shape of it the stainless steel wait till you see what I'm going to show you okay this is a picture of an AP that was put on somebody's Instagram somebody whose name has appeared over the last few days as being one of the last per people to have seen Jay so I did a little bit more digging 
and I found it was actually part of an Instagram reel. Let me show you. Now, that reel was posted on a certain person's Instagram and it's only their second one in. So it's almost the most recent reel. Now, there aren't a lot of posts on this Instagram account, but there's something really interesting about that video. Go back and have a look at it in a second. That watch was not brand new. It was scratched slightly around the edges, around the bezel there. And as the hand turns over on the actual strap itself. So whoever this person was that's flexing that and saying they just bought this AP, it wasn't a brand new watch. A brand new AP, this style, you're probably talking 50 grand. You'd probably get one of these second hand for 10 quid which is 10 grand, if somebody needs to get rid of it quickly. I don't know. Like I've said, I'm not gonna mention who this Instagram account is from, but this person is currently in Malta. So you get the gist, you get the gist. So allegedly the kid stole someone's AP and uh, the other part of the story is that he was high and looking for more drugs, but he ran out of money. Like, like a good Brit, he went to a rave uh, he went to a foreign country to rave, saved, no, he saved up a bunch of money, went to a foreign country and blew his load on the first day. Trust me, I've been there. This is this is British heritage. Um, so he blew all his money on the first day, but he still wanted to party. And for some reason, he thought the best way to make some money was to steal some random person's AP. Now, the kid looks kind of scrawny, so everyone's questioning how could he steal someone's watch? But allegedly, at the party he was at, at the rave, the guy that who's owned, owned of the watch, he was maybe washing his hands. He put the watch on, on the side, was washing his hands in the bathroom, and then the kid snatched it and ran. And obviously, like an idiot, he obviously posted that he had a watch on his wrist and on his Snapchat or Instagram, and that went around, and maybe got found out. Who knows? Either way, it's looking to be a far more complicated and nuanced story than we first surmised. And the thing that I am glad to hear people talking about is the criminal aspect of the kid that you know he was involved in some dodgy dealings in the past that isn't to say that he deserves to be in trouble with drug mules or he deserves to die or anything no that isn't to say that i think people are bringing that thing up about his past being involved in that attack on that kid that split his head open because we know if this was a black kid this is what everyone would be talking about no one would be talking about you know just a kid missing that's what it should always be about the kid is missing let's get him back home but we know if that was a black kid they would have had the worst picture of him possible on the news it wouldn't be him smiling and looking cute with his family and friends it'd be a picture of him throwing up a gang sign or something and they'd uncover and you know expose old tweets they'd post all videos about him and make him look like a bad boy so i'm glad that people are addressing and pointing out that hey this isn't just some kid that going on holiday because a hundreds if not hundreds of thousands if not millions of kids go out to tenerife every single year i watched some videos of that club where this kid was at and I was wondering at first, before I was a bit sceptical, I was like, why is a 19-year-old kid going on holiday by themselves with their friends anyway? Seems a little bit too fast. But allegedly, you know, English kids, the, 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 most English kids are built different, especially white kids. You just grow up with a bit more freedom. And from what I could see on the Instagram videos and shit of that nightclub, it's predominantly, you know, it's predominantly made up of kids under 25 anyway. They all have that same, all the boys have that same TikTok haircut with the fucking bushy front and shit, the curly front. All the girls look exactly the same um, with their neon kind of, you know, um, outfits on and shit and loads of fake tan. But everybody looks like they're up between the ages of like 17 and 25. So it makes sense why he went there. But loads of people go there. They go there all the time. They get fucked up. They have a good time and they come back home safely. The fact that this kid didn't come home safely is probably down to something that he did wrong or being involved with the wrong people. Let's just make, you know, make that clear. This is not some like random thing where some, you know, people smugglers have kidnapped him, you know, Madeleine McCann style. This is definitely, unfortunately, him doing something wrong, which is maybe walking away from the bus stop and trying to make his way somewhere where he's not familiar with, or unfortunately being involved with the wrong people. Either way, let's hope and pray he comes back home safe. Let's hope and pray he comes back home safe.